Hi guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're talking about an amazing, amazing piece of software which can be used for lighting basically anything that you've made in 3D. This software is so cool that once you make something in 3D, all you have to do is export it as FBX with all your camera angles and then you would be able to light this thing as a professional. You actually don't need to really know how to light that much for you to use this software to light uh, anything you want. And the name of the software is HGRI Light Studio. And this is the Carbon version, which is the most recent version that they have released. So I'll go ahead and talk to you guys about the software, the pros, the cons, why you need it, who needs it, and what for. So let's get started. Once you open the software, you'll be welcomed with a UI that looks like this. All right, this UI is so cool, so amazing, straight to the point, but I have some certain things that I'm going to talk about that I wish they have that they don't. All right, so, and here is where you design your HDRIs. This is where your, all your light presets are, and this doesn't come by default. You actually have to download this presets, you know, to install them. And this is one thing I wish comes by default. All right. So here is also where you preview the lights you're designing. I actually don't know why they have two of these. I think maybe one should be better. Like instead of having two of these, I guess maybe they can just have this one and take all of these properties and position them there. Here is where you see all the list of the lights that you have. It makes a lot of sense to have this here. Here is the light control for quick light controls. So you just click and control the light, click and control the light. These are where all your light tools are. And these are, this is your menu. So typically it is a light studio thingy, just like the name says. So once you have your model, you can, you know, test render this thing here, or you can light this thing here. And the very cool thing with this software is they have plugin for virtually every app that exists out there. On the website, they have some very certified plugins, like for 3D Studio Max, for, I guess, Rhino, for uh, Maya and all that. But uh, for some other softwares, they actually list them here, but they don't have like dedicated full heads on plugin on their website for that. So that is one downside for me. I think maybe if you're going to support every software, you should put some sort of generic thing the same way Keyshot has its own and the same way, you know, you can do that with ZBrush. So next up, which I am going to talk about is how you can look things up here. So for you to start, you need to just simply press the playback button. And right now we're going to actually load up a scene later, but now I'm going to talk to you guys with these other ones that exist. So we can start up with a kettle or a watch. I think a watch is cool. So we can start up with this default watch. So you can see this default watch in its amazing state. And by default, this is IPR, so it constantly renders this. So it's progressive and it is rendering at every single point in time. And this brings me to the point where I have to say, I wish this software actually allows you to make camera movement. So it doesn't have a camera of its own, which simply means you cannot pan around the 3D object, right? You cannot rotate, you cannot, uh, you know, all of those things you do with cameras, you cannot do them there. Here is where you have the light. So let's start the designing so you can see how this works. I typically don't keep these things here because I I wish everything stays here a lot of people actually keep their stuff here it's like the first place you get to glance once you want to start working so I typically uh, move all of these things here and maybe the help file can be right about this point because you know help you have you always go there it's muscle memory all right so we have this here then the next thing which we need to do is to start designing first of all it has different lights which is the most insane thing you can ever think about although it's not that insane because the name says light studio but all the lights you can ever imagine to use for rendering stuff exist here all right so we're going to start off with a very soft one which is known as the bulb so the bulb bulb is more like a point light is more like an omni directional light and so you can use uh, the bulb to actually paint light around your scene and how this is done is you can take this paint brush and you can just paint this light right here all right, so we can put this light right about right about here. I'm going to get the second one and we can, you know, select another one and paint that one directly onto the surface. And so we have these two lights happening there. Next thing which you may want to do is to come up with a rectangular light, which is basically known in every other app as a uh, an area light so you can use that and also paint this light from somewhere like this 
So you see things are beginning to look interesting. We can pick a hexagonal light, which is also known in some other apps as uh, an area light or a polygonal light. And then we can also choose to paint this somewhere like that. So let me just position this there. I don't know why it's not painting. All right, so we can paint this exactly somewhere like here. So cool stuff, cool stuff. Other lights exist, so you can play with things like um, like the gradient lights here. I guess this is it. So we can play with the gradient light and choose how we want these lights to, you know, apply to our object. So let's say I bring this gradient light right about there, somewhere like here. Or uh, maybe I can, you know, position this gradient light somewhere like here. I kind of like lights when they reflect on surfaces like this. Where did I do that? All right, so somewhere like here, you can choose to put a gradient light there. And once you do that, you can come over to where you have the gradient color and change the color of the light. So you can choose to change color of the light based on temperature, or you can choose to also change the color of the light based on an image sampled color. So you can also use numeric to do that. And here you have the, the color histogram where you can use to, you know, select lights and, and play with this. So all of these things are so cool that you can use them to design your object. This object is not textured by a long shot, but then you can use lights to actually give that feeling. Now, one thing which I don't like about the light here is I cannot auto select these lights. I have to always click select the light from here. I cannot even select this particular light as it is. I have to auto click, you know, I have to do something like this before I get to select this light. I think by default, it should know that this is the background, which is here. And maybe this background should be auto locked. So if I want to select, I can just simply select all the time. You have to select light. You have to lock this background yourself and you know get to do something like this so i think it could be auto lock and that can work another thing which i think is i know this is for positioning stuff around your scene but then once i am no longer uh, on this particular object and i click here it should also auto select this object but once i click there you can see that that object bounces to that point i don't know but i think to me that would make a lot of sense you know i think to me that would make a lot of sense so now we've looked at a couple of lights. Let's go over to the um, press presets that exist. All right. So let's go over to the presets that exist. For the presets, I can click and drag and drop one of them here. So I can just drop this preset here. Or, you know, the same way which we painted this object earlier, you can also choose to paint these things here. So very, very nice things that you can create. So I'm just going to drop this right about there, just to keep it there. And all of these objects that we have been making ever since, you can change the colors of this object. And you can, you can change the colors of these lights. You can also increase the brightness. So for this, I can turn up the brightness just a little bit. And I can also choose to say, you know, I don't want this to be that color. I want to give it a little tint like this. I can select this other object and I can also do the same thing there. Say, maybe I don't want this as it is. Let's say this particular object as it is. I don't want it to have that width. I want to increase the width just a little bit. I would like to also maybe increase the ball position just a little bit, depending on what you're going for. And let's also do that with uh, expansion here and this other one there so you can see we're having way more light in our scene let me just uh, expand this a little bit and let's move this a bit lower all right so you can see what light we have in there but now instead of going for pure white we can just go for something that has just a tiny tint and the fact that this is real time as you're moving this you're getting a direct feedback is just impressive to me i think any app that claims to be able to do something like this should, you know, have this sort of feature. All right. So I'm just going to go for something like that. Or maybe we can try that. No, I think this is better. Maybe this is a bit better. Let's see. All right. Something like this. And there you go. All right. Now, this is actually something I really, really wish they can fix. The auto select thingy is something I really wish they can fix. Let's also try to look at this. Let's expand this just a little bit. And that is about it. So if for some reason you actually want to use some model that you've made, you can use those models. All right. 
and for this i'm going to jump right into 3d studio max and share with you guys how you can create this you know this amazing stuff but before we actually go to 3d studio max and, act and start doing that it's worth saying that this supports multi-desktop so this software supports multi-desktop which is super impressive that at any point in time you can just dock this out and plug it in a different desktop and use it for whatever uh Thing that you want so yeah this does that as well and at any point in time you can choose to paint light on different stuff like right now you know we've been painting light on just the reflection now you can choose to paint light on the rims you know you can choose to paint light on the rim and just position let's say we position this directly there and you know go, jump back into the reflection and the same thing for the illumination we can still choose to drop in another light and you know paint that light around just for the illumination like uh, how we want the general feel of the entire thing to look like and let's see if i come down here and uh, come through and start painting this here you would start noticing a significant difference so let me just increase this a little bit okay so this is about it all right guys if you want to see how we went ahead to actually do this particular stuff by importing your object into this let's say from a different app importing your object and how you can walk around this object kindly check the next video and i'm going to put links in the description the cards and also on the end notes then you can go ahead and check how you can do this for this particular example we use 3d studio max and you can use any software at all where we talk about how to set up your camera and how to import this thing directly here next thing is i am also going to share with you guys how you can increase the sampling in case you rendering and also how you can get the, everything working in your viewport and the winner for this who can guess what this app is is lucas pedrages i post questions about oh, who can guess what this app is in the community and if you want to join in i'm going to be posting a couple of them later on within next week and at the end of the day i will be giving you a shout out at the end of the video or at the end of the review of whatever video i am doing at that point and a big thumbs up to lucas he said this is hdri studio or something like that and he is right this is hdr light studio and that's going to be about it guys i would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section below and if you like this video you know what to do hit the like button subscribe if you're not turned on notification and tell a friend and until i see you guys next time with a tutorial update review free friday tips and tricks things like this peace